Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I'm Chris Ridyard. This is the Red Report with, alongside my good friend Carlo van der Watering. Carlo, Mr. Ridyard, how are we doing? I say good friend. Uh, it's my birthday tomorrow. I've just received this uh, present in the post. I'd like to call Ming's T-shirt. Where's my present from you, Carlo? Well, it's not your birthday. Well, tomorrow. Just, just chill. Yeah. All right. Uh, you never know what's around the corner. It's I've a got big... a present for you today. I've got a present for you today. It's my anniversary very... today, so this is my present. Oh, happy anniversary. <laughs> I've got a very special guest. It is our man, Chris Shuker. How are you? Are you well? Hi, guys. Yeah, I'm well, thank you. You're looking well. You look... I'm hoping your beard. Is that a lockdown beard? Or... Oh. No, no. This is... Um, I've had a few years now. Permanent structure. <laughs> Permanent structure this year. Staying for good this year. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Thanks for joining us, buddy. We, we really appreciate it. Oh, have, pleasure. Have, you, have you had a busy day today? We... Yeah, I've been working today, yeah. Um, still been doing a little bit of stuff when I got home as well, so been busy days for me. In Brilliant. This nice heat. Brilliant. And we'll talk about what you're up to these days. At the end, we'll, we'll get there. But as always, yeah. on the Red Report, we like structure. So we'll start at the beginning. Carlo, if you will. Yeah. So, um... Chris, obviously um, well known by uh, by all the uh, the Barnsley faithful as that wonder on the wing. Um, where did it start football for you as a little nipper growing up? Was there a team? Was there a, a player that you looked up to and thought that's who I want to be like? Uh, well, not not necessarily. Obviously, as I got older, like about fourteen, I think Michael Owen caught my eye. Yeah. And I was like, like he was quite diminutive and like quite quick and stuff. And he saw he was sort of me driving force a little bit. But when I was younger, just wanted to like obviously like all kids, you know, all lads and girls these days, um, kick a ball around. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, um, I'm very glad, Chris, that you've not said a Dutch player. I don't know if you know, but Carlos Dutch, um, and often the the players like come with Van Basten and I've lost uh, a bit of sig- <laughs> I've lost a bit of signal there, guys. Sorry, uh, that's all right. I was just saying, it's a good job you've not said a Dutch player. Um, Carlo is Dutch. Um, you know, people okay. come out with Van Basten and Burkham. And it, Callie, Woodrow, really... Callie Woodrow this afternoon. Dennis Burkham. I'm going to have Woodrow on my yeah. shirt now. <laughs> well, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, really glad you come up with, I'm glad you've come up with an Englishman. I'm, I'm really happy you've come yeah, up with Mike right. Owen. Who, who was one of mine? Come on, someone uh, local of, to home. Of course, yeah. of course. He's one of my idols. You know, I'm quite diminutive as well. I'm, I'm probably only 5'8", uh, but his pace, absolutely electric, just like yourselves at times. Uh, oh, well. Um, after, <laughs> obviously, this is the Reds report. We talk about Barnsley, um, and we're going to get there eventually. But what, what, what was before Barnsley? Uh, I know that Man City were involved at some point. Is that right? Yeah, so uh, before Barnsley, like going from school days, I was at Everton till I was about 11 or 12. And then I sort of, I wasn't keen on the structure, really. Um, not allowed to play for school and stuff. I think it was just the start of it then. So I sort of, I, I went away from it. I went and got um, I went and got myself a pony. I had done a bit of show jumping. I had a motocross bike. I'd done a bit of that. Um, and I just, I was just a kid. Like, loads of lads, all the kids who were, like, local. I still played for my Sunday League team, and all the kids who were local, like, oh, I can't believe you're, like, left footy for, like, show jumping or 
motocross I was like I haven't said I'm just enjoying myself yeah. and um, so as I got a bit older then I got to like 15 16 that's when I realized you know that's that's the time to go so I went on trial to um, I was at played a game for Runcorn under 18 when I was 15 um, and I went on from that I went on trial to Man City and Everton asked me back so I went on trial to both of them and then I, cho- I had a choice and I chose Man City Wow unbelievable Man City with Premier League appearances Looking at your stats, you know, from your league appearances, what 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 happened after that? So between sort of Man City and then arriving at Barnsley, what um what what was the journey like? Yeah, so so I chose Man City, um, and then I had six like fantastic years there, like a real a real ground. I had a, I had a good group of lads um, in the youth team, obviously coming through the ranks and stuff, and then I got into the first team around. I'd say I was probably about 18. I started like really getting involved with them. And then 18, 19, 20, I'd made my debut at, at, at Way at Not County. It was on, um, on the Twin Towers Day, 2001. Um, yeah, we were in the hotel when that, when that um, tragedy happened. So um, I made my debut that night, scored after four minutes ahead, I believe it or not. <laughs> One of many in my career. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and then and then I was around the first team for a good while, but I was travelling to all the games. I was like the left out, I was on the bench. You know, it, it's fantastic experience. So I went to all the big grounds, um, sat on the bench, but I just didn't feel like I was playing enough. And I got to the age of like 21, 22. And then Keegan pulled me in one day and he said, um, Barnsley have been on the phone, Paul Hart's been on the phone. Um, he wants to go up there and have a chat. They want to build the team around you for next season. And I went, do you know what? I said, I'm at that age now. That's the decision. I'm going to I'm gonna go and have a chat with him. And that's what I did. Wow. Unbelievable. So, so the call from, from Paul, unbelievable to think you, work, you worked under Keegan. That is incredible. Any, any good Keegan stories? Any good interactions with, with him? Yeah, I had loads. Some, some not so great, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> um, one of them was out. I was... Um, I was on fire pre-season. I'd scored like I'd never, never a sense forward, and I never really classed myself as a goal scorer. But I was playing in behind um, in the number ten hole position, and I, w- I was literally on fire. I felt good. I was playing with like obviously good players, Nicholas and Elka being one of them, and it was it was around me. So you, you, you're mixing with some top boys. I felt I felt good about myself. So I played against Rochdale on um, on the Tuesday night pre-season. Scored another two. He won six one. Set up, I think, two assists and two goals out of the six. I've then gone to Tranmere on the Wednesday night. Um, played, he said again, would you just play? Because I was young, fit, you know, like. So I said, yeah, I'll play. So I played forty five minutes. Scored again, um, and then come in on the Thursday, like. I was flying. I'd scored three that week. Had two assists. Won like we won't beat Tranmere six one. So we won like twelve. A aggregate of 12, um, 12 1 over the two games. And um, he says, You're going on loan. I said, Oh, brilliant. My agent had spoke to me at the time. He said, Burnley and Crystal Palace were interested. I was like, Oh, brilliant. Look, you know. And he went, uh, Well, I don't think it's them. I was like, Well, I spoke to my agent yesterday and he said, like, If, if nothing happens here, obviously, depending on going, going into the season coming. Burnley and Palace are interested. He said, right, okay, go home. I'll give you a call this afternoon. So I went home. He gives me a call. He says, shoot. So I went, yeah. He says, yeah, you're going to Rochdale. I went, Rochdale? Like, no disrespect to Rochdale. But at the time, I was flying. I just beat them 6-1 six, six, uh, yeah. and set up two and scored two. I went, Rochdale? He went, um, they were in League Two at the time. He went, yeah. I went, um, why is that? I said, I could go to Palace or Burnley if I'm going to go anywhere. He went, um, you either go there, and I, I probably should cut this a little bit short. You either go there and play, or I won't play in reserves and I'll ruin you. I was like, right, what time do you want me there, Gaffer? He went, <laughs> uh, 10 o'clock for half 10 start. I went, no problem. So I went there, got four yellow cards and a straight red in the fifth and got sent back. My head had fell off. Oh, my oh, goodness, mate. Uh, Carl, but, just before you ask the, the next question. Oh, sorry, go on, Chris, go on. Go on. But apart from that, he was absolutely fantastic with me. Wow. Right. That's amazing, isn't it? Ka- Carol, Carol, just before you ask the next question, yeah. if Kevin Keegan were to listen to this podcast, you'd know what his thoughts would be, wouldn't you? 
He would love it. He, <laughs> yeah. he would, Carlo. He'd love it. Yeah, if we beat them on Saturday. <laughs> Chris, on, Carl. So, obviously, um, at, at Man City, a good grounding. You, you then arrive at, at a club like Barnsley. Now, you know and I know, we've been living with this for, I don't know, years and years and years. There is that small club syndrome in South Yorkshire when you've got two clubs just south of us, just further up the M1, you've got that club that got, they've got a home attendance of at least four and a half million and they take 12 million every away match and they're playing wide and they call Leeds. And Barnsley's often seen as sort of like that black sheep in between that plays a little bit of football now and then. What was it like for you, though, as a player coming in to the Barnsley setup? What, what, what were the, the players like, the staff, the setup? What, what were your first impressions? Well, the, the, fir- the, first, um, the first experience out of Barnsley, really. I actually come on against four Man City at, at Oakwell um, a year, or, a couple of years before. I don't know if you remember, Dad Nookery was absolutely sensational on the night and he he destroyed um, Carl, is it Carl Fagan? Carl Regan, uh, yeah. Carl Regan, yeah. Carl he, Regan, he yeah, yeah, yeah. Carl Regan, yeah. Um, and I come on for about 20 minutes there, so I knew the ground and I knew like the atmosphere. And then, I mean, just before I come, I don't know if you remember, I was on loan at Hartlepool. And yeah. um, I'd gone up to Hartlepool and we played Barnsley at Oakwell. And um, the game finished, I think, 2 all. Chris Lumsden got sent off for elbowing me in the face. Neil Austin gave me a bloody nose and smashed my face all over the sideboard. Um, so I was getting I was getting booed a lot that game. Because Hartlepool, where they are, I drove to the game with, with a couple of my mates. I'd met the, the, the lads there. And... Uh, as I've come out after the game, security guards have gone in. You, you can't go that way. Um, there's loads of people waiting for you. So they opened the bottom gates for me out the, from the players' entrance. I had, to, I had to basically drive out to the right rather than going up to the left. So I drove out to the right, drove round the back of the ground and out and away. Next minute, obviously, Paul Hart, I get the, the call that Paul Hart wants to have a chat with me. So I turned up then... <laughs> It was a little bit of a mixed reaction. I'm sure some Reds fans will agree. There was a bit of a mixed reaction for a while, I think. I don't think I ever won all of them over. You won me over. I tell you what, when when you saw Chris play, it was like, I don't know how to pre- I don't know how to say. You know them cars you can get for little kids. You roll them backwards and once you let them go, they just absolutely fly down. You gave the ball to Chris Shook and that's, that's what happened. He absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny because you are... Obviously, you played on the wing. You wind up certain players, possibly. At times, you're very hard yeah. to keep. It's funny because Barnsley have just recalled a winger like that from, from, from Hull. Uh, in Mally Will, it's a very similar player who right. splits, splits fans' personalities, but equally, he can, he's can he got that edge about him that winds fans up. So maybe Paul Hart saw something in there that, that probably quite, you know, just fit Barnsley's mould at that time, really. Yeah, I guess so. I, I actually played well that game. I enjoyed it. And I, I, I used to, well, obviously, Barnsley fans didn't realise, was I used to love them getting on me. You hear, this, right, you yeah, hear yeah. some players say, you know, some players like that and it makes them play better and some go under. I used to, I used to love it when the, the away fans hated me. That was like, that was fuel to the fire. Yeah, that was oh, very yeah. similar to and, um, Adam Hamill when he played for us. When the, when the opposition yeah. fans got onto Adam Hamill, that, yeah. that's fuel to a fire. That's a rad rag yeah, to a yeah. bull. And, and that's, that's where you're not, and I'll start showing off. But it gives you that extra 5% when the opposition fans are the 12 man getting you going. Yeah. yeah. They didn't even know me, the Barnsley fans. Every time I got the ball for the rest of the game, it was the, the old crowd erupted in booze. So I was like, happy days, let's go. Like, <laughs> yeah. you, you, you obviously, it, it's, a, it's a thing what I had from a kid, you know, to be a, to be a player. It was like proving people wrong. And when all them fans done that, it was like, all right, let's, you want to boo me? I'll prove you wrong. And go and... Well, they certainly know you were from, from then on in, especially when you've, when you've got that red shirt on. Um, I'm going to put a slide up now, uh, Chris. These are your stats, uh, your first goals and, and your last goal and appearances. Uh, Carlo, just for the podcast, uh, are you able to read that out for us? Yeah, so for those that are listening and not viewing, um, Chris Shuka appearances 114, goals 18. Chris made his debut on the 20th of March 2004 versus Port Vale, a match that finished nil-nil. His first goal came on the 10th of August 2004. Uh, it was against Bristol City, a match we won 2-1. And his final appearance on the 27th of May 2006 versus Swansea City, a match that was drawn 2-2. Um, uh, other accolade that he got while he was a red for uh, Chris, he was the Supporters Player of the Year 2004-2005. That's what I said. We spoke to Anthony Kay, 
couple of weeks ago, and I always say, you can always tell what the fans think of you, because I think yeah. you could talk about getting promotions, but I think once the fans vote you, especially in a town like Barnsley, where all we want to see is players just give 100% on the pitch. And you know what? If we're beaten by a better opponent, we're at ease with that, but we just want somebody giving 100%. That's what you got from that one. That's what you got from Chris, and hence well-deserved 2004-2005 Supporters Player of the Year. So, Chris, just looking at that, over 100 appearances, which is... Yeah. Well, it's any team, you must have done something right to, to play over 100 times for them. Out of your 18 goals, then, do any stand out in your head that, that you think... Oh, yeah. Good? Yes, and, I you know, I think I scored my best goal. Well, one of them. Um, at home against Forrest. Um, right. It was... I think it was Devaney's drove down the left. And then I, I, I was on the right, but obviously... Like used to wander all over, so like a, like a little gate and manager's nightmare. Keep wrecking the shape, but <laughs> I've I've like jogged across the box. He's played it into me like a, a forward pass. I flicked it around the corner to Hazy through the back of my legs. He played it back to me, and a left foot struck it into the far corner. And it was it was even better because I ran over to Andy Ritchie. All that week I'd been practicing on my left foot, just like, right. like with no keeper, just smashed it into the goal. And he was like, "Any chance you use that? You haven't? I've never seen you use it." And I've done that the next day, so it was even better. So I ran over to him, pointing at <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, Carl mentioned your supporters player of the year. Barnsley is a wonderful place to live, but it builds itself on a certain type of character in terms of we're very working class. It's all about uh, effort over skill at times, really. Um, would you argue that the way you play fit Barnsley in terms of your, your work ethic and, and, and not giving up and, and that fight? Would, would you argue that that's probably why players vote, uh, fans voted your player at year. I, I, absolutely, one hundred percent. Like, I, I would, I would work hard in training. I would work hard every single game. I might not always play the best. The position I played was, I, a lot of emphasis on me was to open doors for goals. Um, now, when you've got that type of player, I'm quite happy taking the flack, but I've you've to try it. I'm not a sideways passer. I'd always go yeah. for that killer pass. If it goes through, it's a goal. If not, I'll give it away. Do you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll take that on the chin. No problem. Some players can't. I enjoyed it. And yeah. I'd, I'll, I'll guarantee you I always worked 110% in a game. And maybe that's why you were so enjoyable to watch, the, the fact that you were 100% in and you're willing to make them gambles and willing to make them moves. Carlo... Yeah, very much, like I said, very much in the mould of, of Adam Hamill on that wing, the pace, the trickery. And, and it's that risk or reward type of play, like I said. It's not a safety pass going back. It's either going yeah, in the no. box and, and somebody gets a hold of it and it's an assist. And if the keeper gets it, they gave position. But you don't win matches by going backwards, do you? Um, no, no. Look, looking at your time as a Barnsley player then, um, what, what friendships did you develop with some of the Barnsley players that might still be going now? Or who were your best mates while, while you were at Barnsley? What other players did you really get on with? And maybe some that uh, you maybe didn't get on with so well? Yeah, so um, so obviously Nardi. I used to travel with Nardi um, and Tom Baker for the first year. He's obviously only played a couple of times. So we travelled and when Tom moved on, it was just me and Nardi. So we we, we come really close. Uh, then I'm... And, Anthony Kay obviously lives over on my estate now. He lives near me now. Um, oh, yeah. I sort of helped bring him over. I got a phone call off the manager to bring him over to Tramway, and I said, yeah, get him. And he did. I showed him where, like, the estate where I live, and he ended up moving on. He still lives here now. So Casey's a you know big mate. And in that first game from Hartlepool, he didn't want to speak to me either. He was one of the he was a rude one. I was trying to talk to him on the halfway line. He just popped me off like the didn't want to speak. Oh, <laughs> now he's like one of my best mates. So, <laughs> it's, it's, um, funny, it's, yeah. it, it's funny, isn't it? We, we spoke to Anthony Kay a couple of weeks ago. And, and we're not just saying it because they get uploaded to YouTube and loads of people have watched it. Um, I've always said that I thought Anthony Kay was one of the most underrated players um, in, in a Barnsley shirt. And he went on to other clubs. I mean, what did we say, Chris? Three promotions to mm. the championship that he's, he's, he's got with his teams. Um, players, player, as a player, well, fans, player of the year for a couple of seasons, and it, it's interesting, isn't it? That after all this time, you sort of, you, you know, you 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 live what within a couple of miles of each other. Uh, you mentioned Nadi Yellow. Oh, we, we live, we live five hundred yards from each other. Brilliant, Being crazy. That's, That's good. Brilliant. Isn't it? Uh, During lockdown, I mean, it, they could have a kick about on the street. Uh, it was clear room here, know. but he's obviously Barnsley through and through at that time, uh, K, and he's just he's yeah. just got his own interests oh. at heart, hasn't he? 
Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Some players aren't talkers on the pitch. I mean, if you speak to any other football in the league who doesn't know Anthony Kay off the pitch, they'll go, who does that Anthony Kay think he is? Yeah, but yeah. And he's one of the nicest blokes. He's one of the nicest blokes yeah. we've had on here. He, he talked... We want him back because we want him to come on and do previews and stuff for us about the games because he's such a nice yeah. bloke. Uh, just, yeah, is. brilliant. Um, we'll talk about your goals. Um, we'll also talk about your favourite games. I'd like to have a good guess, but I'll leave it to you. What's, what's your favourite game in a Barnsley shirt? I had one early, early on against um, QPR. I think it was quite... It wasn't personal. It wasn't like how I played. I just remember it. I think it was 3-2. And um, Murphy, the left back we had on loan from some from Middlesbrough, I think he scored a free kick winner. That was a that was a class game. That All was right. in the end of the first season they arrived. Then the the next ones, I'd say one that stands out is Bristol City at home, the first home game of Paul Arts new season. Okay. Um, we won two one. I scored two, so it's obviously a good one. But I remember the atmosphere. We had like fourteen thousand there that night, and it was. It was. I remember thinking, oh, I'm right up for the season. It tailed off a little bit as the season went because we weren't doing as good as what we'd planned to start, of understandable. Course. But yeah, the Bristol City one was um, was a classic. Yeah, uh, and obviously we'll allude to the, the Cardiff game. Um, yeah, just, obviously just, a, bit of a bit of a difficult one for me, to be honest. Okay. The Cardiff one. Um, I, I've... I'd obviously, I'd, I didn't know at the time. I'd played 86 consecutive games I, at the most. I only seen wow. this on Sky last year. Um, I seen it on Sky. It, it come up one of your one of the players. No, it was about two years ago now, and it come up with the lad's name, and it said the most consecutive. Oh gosh, it's all right. We can still hear. You. It's all right. We can sorry. still hear. Sorry, it's all right. Fine. Sorry. About <laughs> It said the most consecutive on the on the ticker tape at the bottom, the most consecutive players in a Barnsley shirt since two thousand and six. Chris Duker, eighty six in wow. brackets. And I was like, wow. So the first game I missed would have been the eighty seventh, would have been Huddersfield, second playoff away. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I had a bit of a bad taste in my mouth with that. Um, what do you think was the thought through... process behind behind you not playing that game? Um, there was a little bit. I, I, I hadn't played well in the first leg understandably, but I'd felt after the, I'd played obviously every game in that season and I'd, and I'd a, had a pretty successful season personally. I'd scored about, I think I'd scored 11. Um, that's plenty of assists, but I think I deserved the chance to play in the second leg from what I'd done in the previous, obviously 86 that allowed me to play every game. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I'd had a little bit of a thing with the contract issue. Um, I was out of contract the year before everyone else because I'd only signed like 15 months when I come. So I'd signed another year. And the chairman wanted to sort some stuff out before and I, I sort of stepped back from that. I don't know if that had an influence. I don't know. Only Andy Ritchie would know. And then obviously we're going, we, we won, which was great. And then we went into the final and I was on the bench, which was a bit disappointing again after 86 games consecutive, of really. Of course. But you played your part in that ultimately. Yeah. I, I, well, I played my part in the um, in the semi final. I yep. tripped up their mascot. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> it seems to <laughs> a, quite a lot of um, quite yeah, a lot I've of people that. sort of talk about it. So when right. when Huddersfield scored <laughs> to equalise, I was warming up and it was lashed down. And their their um, Terry was sprinting down the line with his arms up, and I was just me had a. On, <laughs> So obviously, I'm sat on the bench, or two chipped him up, and he went, he went skidding through the mud. So we, we just Huddersfield have equalised. They've come back to the, the, the kick off. Next minute, the police are coming out from the tunnel. He's gone and said to the police um, that I've assaulted them. So Andy Ritchie's fuming with them scoring, and then he's having to deal with the police. One of his players <laughs> has assaulted apparently the. Um, Huddersfield Terrier so it was all going off in the dugout the dugout absolutely crying <laughs> laughing, laughing at that. all the lads were laughing I but... think that's my favourite yeah I, it, I, I think a few people seen it because every now and then I, I see like a little post come up where they meant, some people have mentioned I'm it I'm going to look for it now again that's I, my, I, that's my it's one of those things I forgot you know I've that's seen my it my favourite story we've ever had on the show I love that that is brilliant <laughs> he literally went sliding in the mud he got up like 
like a drowned dog, full, fully drowned dog. <laughs> so it should be. It's a terrier, isn't it? Um, look, um, um, no, oh, you, sorry, you Carlo, just, just one more oh, question one. before. I, don't, I just don't want to leave that final. I'm right in thinking that you, you scored a penalty yeah. in the final. Just talk us through that moment uh, the way you picked yeah, it. So did you put yourself forward? Did you walk? What did you run? Uh, what's, the, what, what's, what's the everything? Just fill us in. The, you had the nail on the head a minute ago when you said I played my part. So I obviously went back to the semi-final. I'd done that with the with the um, the terrier, and then we've gone into the final. I'm sat on the bench. My mate Lee Trundle, who played for them, who was obviously one of their best players, is also sat on the bench. So we're looking at each other, thinking like both was fuming, warming up, having a chat. I come on the pitch, and I remember I had a little bit of a wiggle. Um, and you remember Kev McLeod? He used to play for um, Swansea. Yes. He was another lad I knew. And I come on, he went, "Don't you be doing something like." Um, out of the bag, pulling something out of the bag now. And I've got it. I went on this little dribble and I thought, this is this is coming out of the bag. And it didn't quite happen. And after that, I had to, as soon as that final whistle went, I turned, this is no word of a lie. I turned, looked at the goal, picked my spot, ran over to Andy Ritchie and went, I'm, I'm having a penalty. I have to have one. And the, the full reason, lads, honestly, the reason I've done that is because I didn't feel like I played part take a penalty had contributed at all to that season yeah. so soon literally the the second the whistle went I looked at the goal there's my spot ran over and went Gaffer I've got to have a penalty he went Brilliant. you're on bang and then and the rest is history yeah wow. it was a nice more of a nice feeling than a happy to score nice feeling not to miss Yes, yeah. And you know, like, you don't really want that on your CV. I didn't want to let the fans down, didn't want to let the club down, didn't want to let my teammates down. But, yeah, I, I was always going to score. I was confident I was going to score. Penalty is a mindset, and it sounded like you had it from, from the minute. That, I did, the was, second, that's why. Goal. I didn't wait for him to ask me, and then, like, ah, I just went, yeah, I'm having one bang. That's of where course. it's going, let's go. Of course. Carl. Chris, Chris you, you talk with such fondness and warmness about your, your time at Barnsley. Just a couple of uh, sort of quick-fire questions about your time at Barnsley and some of the players. Um, funniest player? Carlo, can, oh. can I just... Can I just get the charger? Because this battery's just... Beat. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Quick, we'll get the charger. Two seconds. Yeah, that's all right. I love I, that guy. I've not, I, I've not seen the uh, the video, of Carlo. Um, I've, I've, I've seen it once, but I can't remember if it's telly or YouTube. But it's something we're gonna. I'll find it and I'll put it on our. Um, I'll put it on our. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, it's good. Yeah, it's if good. I find it, I'll stick it in the interview when we upload it. Okay. Brilliant. Are we sorted, Chris? Yeah, we're yeah. sorted. There he is. Look, um, sorted. So thinking back about your time with Barnsley FC, um, let's start with the most skillful player in a Barnsley shirt that you've played with. The most skillful player. Uh, I'm gonna say. Oh, sugar. I'm gonna say. Uh, do you know what? I'll give him a bit of credit. Martin Devaney. He used to he used to keep me amused. Um, I'd watch him throwing his uh, step overs and all that, and yeah. obviously. Sorry, lads. That's right. That's right. Who, who's charging. Who's the best winger He's... between you and Martin? Uh, it's like, I don't want to start a fight, but who's the best winger between you and Martin? I am going to text him afterwards and tell him. So. <laughs> I don't know. Well, he he used to say to me, his, all his family used to come, and all through one season, he was like, you you have to you have to get a move to the Championship this year. You have to get a move. I was like, mate, we'll just play. We'll see what happens. He was like, there'll be people. He said, my family even say, unless you play well, we don't win. And that was that was the other playmaker, you know what I mean? Which was a great yeah. confidence to take off him. Of wow. course, of course. I actually Without never a... forget that them words he said to me. Besides Thank yourself, you. who was the fastest fastest player you've played with? Uh, Baldy, Mickey Bolden. Right. All right. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Um, a bit of an awkward question is what we have to ask. Um, just imagine, for whatever reason, um, you, you, you can't find your clothes after the match. Who was the worst dressed Barnsley player? Obviously, oh. not the kids, but who was the worst dressed that you, that you ever played with? <laughs> He'll be coming back in a minute, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> I want It'll to know what it is. <laughs> Give it a minute. It's fine. It's fine. These well, things happen. Are you there, Chris? I'd say... 
Yeah, I'm here for guys, yeah. Yeah, sorry, we, oh, we, 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 lost, we, lost your, we lost a connection for a minute there, Chris. Um, so the worst... Yeah, it was quite poor, yeah. The worst dressed player? The worst dressed, I'd say... Oh, no. We, we, we can hear you, we can hear you. can still hear you. Signal, tell Anthony K. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I'm a seriously, that. seriously. He, only, do you know what? He probably wasn't that bad, but it was the opposite to what I would be interested in. Yeah. So, you know, it's just one of them. Yeah. I'm still wearing all Stone Island gear, like, oh, yeah. Like a football. <laughs> he should have and, been in the terraces, never mind on the pitch. Yeah. And, and the opposite, I suppose. Um, who, during your time in the club, had the worst haircut ever? I mean, we've seen some, obviously due to lockdown, with the bars in place currently. But who, who did the who had the worst Barnet ever? Worst Barnet? It's gotta be probably Hassel. That <laughs> white, that oh, what was he trying to? Uh, yeah, probably yeah. your ginger. Just leave it. Everyone know your ginger. <laughs> I used to say, "What is that?" And he said, "The worst thing was he used to tell me he's half Italian." Half Italian. <laughs> Never been. You haven't even been to Italy. Never mind. Have it in you. Um, oh, Bobby, Bobby also came on the show a few weeks back. Another great player. What what a group of players that that appeared to be. Uh, we've mentioned it yeah. numerous times, and we've been we know when we've interviewed you guys and that that squad. It just seems to be a, a common uh, reoccurring theme. The fact that how much you got on together and what what types of different characters there were. It must have been the dream at the time. Yeah, we did. We had a we had a good, but we had a good bunch. Obviously, Bobby was the opposite end of the scale from me. I'd keep the dressing room alive, and he'd try his best to kill it. Right. Okay. But um, but he's still a still a great part of that. And, and every dressing room needs needs every every different type of personality. If you've got too many of one or too many of the it'll fail. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so that was your time at Barnsley. What about? Um, Chris Schulker in 2020. It's June 20. It's the 25th. I know this because it's my wedding anniversary. What are you up to nowadays? Happy, happy anniversary. Thank you. It's well. It's more of a task uh, than be, a sentence. These days, to be fair, but, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've retired officially in like 2014. To, oh, I always get this wrong. Yeah, 2014 officially retired, um, and then. I went in with Mickey Adams as assistant manager at Tramia, which was a great opportunity. I ended up signing back on um, at that Christmas time, so I played a couple of games in the 2000s. So basically, my contract ran out in 2015. From then, I, um, I wanted to get into a bit of um, racehorse, a bit like trying to be a jockey, a bit of racehorse riding. So I'd done a little tiny bit, and then I got, I got injured. Uh, pulled me groin, nothing deep, but just just tweaked me groin. So I put a stopper to it, and then I re- it was a time where I had to get me like sort of life in order going forward. So I was a family member I had a gardening business. Um, now she had a couple of um, a couple of commercial sites, car dealerships and stuff. So she gave me a couple, and I built that up. So I, I'm a, actually a commercial gardener is what me, one of my main oh, businesses. Oh, okay. Um, I do that on the, that's like. On my day, I do that three days a week. I have a football agency. I'm, I'm, I have my own company doing that. So I look after a few boys. That's good. Which keeps me hand in football. Yeah. Real. Pardon? Yeah. What? Just really quick. We spoke to Brian Howard a couple of weeks ago, who's also a, a football okay. agent. Is there anything from? And I don't want you know. I, I, I don't want it to be negative. But is there anything that you learned through your time as a player with dealing with agents? that made you decide to be an agent and do things the right way? Because that's very much what Brian Howard talks about. Sometimes, yeah. you know, agents very pushy, uh, you know, mo- forcing players almost to move to benefit <laughs> them. Is, is, is it for you, A, to keep in touch with the game and B, to do it almost like ethically towards young players? A, to keep in touch with the game, B, to do it ethically for the players. 100% he's just hit the nail on the head. He often I, does I that. He often answers number. his own question. He's good at it. He's good. Yeah, no, you were bang, you were bang on. Absolutely, Carlo, you were bang on. And and that's literally the only reason I do it. It keeps me yeah. keeps me touching the game with the contacts I've, I've le- like made over the years. Um, and then and then it helps um, the players who I look after because I do it like a player, not like an agent who hasn't been involved in the game. 
of course, of course. Well, Chris, it's been a pleasure <gasps> to have you on the I show. Also, I so, am well, also riding ride the racehorses again twice I a thought week. I'd, I, thought, I thought I'd seen a photograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah back on we, that. We, we've got a, well, a charity race this year, yeah. Right, what's that looking like then? Is that training twice a week? Is, is the is the charity race the next thing you're aiming to, to be at? And do yeah, you, how far do you I ride out two mornings. Right, okay. I ride out two mornings a week at um, Ollie Greenall's. It's in Malpas, near them. And I, I ride a couple, two or three out in the morning with the jockeys, which is like absolutely unbelievable. Keep on saying after the football, it gives you something to like look forward to. Then yeah, of course. Of course, and a, a similar the weekend and the tr- like an, they would give you a, time and they would get you like a similar adrenaline rush type. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Know. Yeah, the adrenaline rush is amazing. So I love doing it. I was I was hoping to have a charity race a uh, in tree in October, but with all this, it's looking like it's going to be probably next year. But I will be doing one at some point, hundred percent. Well, you'll have, you'll have to come back on and, and talk us about that. We, we look forward to hearing about how that goes at some point. Can yeah, we? love yeah. To, yeah. We've 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 been talking to a lot of. Um, Ex, ex boundary players and legends, and that team that Chris talked about. Um, there is, whenever you talk to them, there is something I don't know. The passion comes to life again, almost, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's. Um, I think it's rare yeah. at times that a, a, a team or a club has as a team like that, where everybody just seems to be like that. That's what we're hoping for with Barnsley at the moment, as we're fighting our way out of relegation. But every single one, the story of Chris is just yeah. fascinating for me. I remember sitting in the West End, watching Chris Juca literally just bumming down the wing. And, you know, um, I put something on our Twitter earlier, and Mark Richards called you something like um, small, swift, but a pearl of a, a right foot or, or, or something like that. And I can just remember, if Chris Juca were playing, the striker would have at least two or three chances during the match. Whether he scored or not, that was down to him, but the assistant would be there. And <laughs> it's, just, it's just amazing to talk and That's see nice how that life story continues. Most Barnsley fans think I can't cross. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe they were just poor shots. Chris. Maybe they were just poor shots. Most Barnsley fans have laid me across. <laughs> it's Chris, been an you absolute pleasure. Much, yeah, Joe, yeah. Oh, because you say so. You take it, it over the fans. No, when you take a corner, and any no, even like the young lad at Liverpool last night, he hit the front man with two corners. Now, when you take a corner, anyone. Could, I could literally just lump it into the box oh, yeah. and hang it up and make sure I don't miss the front man. But there's a there's a skill. You've got to like you've got to hit it at a pace at an angle where it just misses that front man's head by about a foot. So you've got a sm- over like a forty yard strike. You've got like a foot of height window to get it through. So give give some lads some um, a bit of a leeway when they. I know. Front yeah. man, it's interesting you say that, Chris. I've not mentioned it on today's show. I play oh, Sunday League football. Here we go. Um, I, oh, I take the corners for my Sunday League football. Hello. And sometimes I, I have no idea what makes a good corner right. and what makes a bad corner, but it's interesting you've said that. Like, I've eaten them and I think, oh, that's a good corner. I've yeah. eaten it again and thought, that, that's a bad corner. But I guess, I guess I know what I'm trying to aim for now, so it's a good tip. He's, oh, there he is. There he is. He's back. There he is. Yeah, you've got a window of about a foot above the guy's head. That's just, brilliant. Just to make it a bit more interesting for you, though, um, Chris Ridgard, do you play in the Mexico League? Uh, I do, yeah. I play in the right. Mexico League. Well, um, just, just to let you know that my lad's changed jobs today, which means he is uh, every weekend off. So you will be coming up against him. Um, a six foot five Dutch number six on the back so that will be one of the matches I will come and watch and I wonder if you still talk to all these professionals about your career as a Sunday League player brilliant <laughs> Chris thank you very much for joining us we really oh, appreciate pleasure. it guys. please come back on again talk to us some more come and have a look will, no maybe you've, come you've and do a preview details. or a review of Barnsley yeah spot on buddy Carlo thanks for joining us it's been thank a pleasure much, Chris. both Chris's you, this, is, this is the Reds report thank you very much thanks, for watching thanks Chris Cheers, Chris. Thank you very much. Subscribe, follow, enjoy. See you later, Chris. Cheers, mate.